What's going on guys, it's David here, and today we're gonna to be talking about why the CrossFit National Leaderboard is broken. What's going on guys, it's David here, and once again, I'd like to welcome you guys to another video where we just talk about all things going on in the world of CrossFit, everything from product reviews and to news. And so if you enjoy today's content, make sure to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button because that lets me know I'm creating the kind of content that you guys wanna see. So for a little bit of context behind the CrossFit National Leaderboard, there's a few basic requirements that allow a country to send a uh, national representative to the games. Now, specifically for countries to have the eligibility to send an athlete, they basically just need to have one affiliate that's uh, in basically good standings with CrossFit Incorporate, um, and that needs to be established by the end of the first uh, workout of the Open, and that basically gives that country the ability to send an athlete. Now, for athletes, there's a little bit more that goes involved with that process. The first being that uh, for an athlete to qualify, they essentially need to have citizenship for that country established by the end of the first open workout for that year. In combination with that, that same athlete also needs to be the top qualifying athlete for that country, having completed every single workout for that year as prescribed. Now there is one caveat with that for the athlete and that's the athlete doesn't actually have to live in said country in order to qualify for said country. Uh, the basic requirements are essentially what I previously said, that the athlete needs to have the top score uh, for that country doing everything Rx. The country needs to have at least one affiliate uh, in good standing, and both of those need to be met by the first open workout, and that's pretty much it. But I think this process still has a lot of holes in it, and I think it actually allows for a lot of gaming of the system um, with a few examples that I'd like to show you guys now. So the first issue with this process is that based on this qualification system that we currently have, the athletes that are actually being sent don't actually represent the fittest athletes in the world that competed and registered uh, for the Open. And uh, that all comes uh, very evidently through this article that was created by Heat On Mind. I actually came across this article on Reddit uh, that was shared, and it basically essentially compares the top five athletes that are being sent to the games that were national qualifiers and the uh, bottom five athletes that qualified for the games through this qualification systems for the national qualifiers. Now, I just want to apologize because I don't have all this memorized, so I'm actually gonna be reading this off my phone, so bear with me. But uh, essentially, this is how those numbers compare. I'm just gonna look at the top three for the top top five and the bottom five. So uh, for the US, uh, who placed first worldwide, we had Matt Frazier, who scored a total of 66 points, and his best performances weren't 19.3 and 19.5, where he placed first. Um, in second place, we have uh, Lefteris Theophanidis, who plays second worldwide, who scored 75 points, and his best performance was 19.5. And then in third worldwide, we have uh, Bjorgven Carl Goodmanson, who placed uh, third, like I said, scored a total of 95 points, and his best performance was 19.1, where he tied uh, for fifth place. Now let's compare those numbers to the bottom five national champion qualifiers for the 2019 CrossFit Games. Now the, I guess, bottom five individuals who technically qualified, we have uh, Edom Ahiku from Ghana, who placed uh, 35,353rd worldwide with total points of uh, 220,805th. His best performance was 19.4, where he placed uh, 29,867th. Uh, now, the preference here is that uh, there were only four male athletes uh, in total who competed uh, for Ghana uh, for the national qualifier. Um, next, we have uh, Andre Alipate, who placed 
42,585th worldwide with total points adding up to 256,044. His best performance was 19.2 where he placed uh, 28,588th. And the preference here is that he was the only male athlete in all of Tonga uh, who competed at the games. Uh, last uh, for Mozambique, we have Patrick Santos who plays 65,923rd worldwide with total points adding up to 360,782. Uh, his best performance was 19.4 where he placed 28,855th. Now this article also mentions and goes over the scores for the women as well that kind of looks at those scores but I'm really for the purpose of this video going to only focus on the men. I'll link down below so you can see the full article. Now I say all of that and I want to put this all into perspective because let's look at my scores from the 2019 CrossFit Open and I was nowhere near close to qualifying to go to the games as a national champion but according to these requirements I could have easily already been a citizen of another country basically let's say for example if I was uh, I came over to the US when I was a little kid uh, but for my scores I ranked um, 93,871st um, and I was in the 51st percentile but I think it's safe to say that with these scores that these individuals have put out in regards to technically being the national champions for these countries, these people don't actually represent the fittest individuals in the world because they place so low. There was only 195,000 people that qualified for the games. So at most, these people may have ranked in the 50th percentile. So these people weren't actually representative of people that actually should get invites to go to the games. Another issue that I had with this process came down to this whole process of uh, competing in countries where people actually weren't representative of those countries. And that was, again, people who, um, for example, I know people from my gym who said that they were going to compete for other countries, even though they didn't live in those countries. And they might not have been in those countries for who knows how long. Uh, let's say, for example, they came over here when they were five years old, but they were already national citizens of, let's say, Italy. Um, but they haven't been back to Italy within, let's say, 20 years. Um, so does that person actually represent that country? And yes, I know one can say, well, I mean, does it really matter where they live? That's true. But I think for the sake of looking at these countries that are a lot smaller in population where technically somebody can come in, establish an affiliate, compete at that affiliate, and essentially qualify to go to the games, and again, usurp this system and not actually be a, a representative of a high caliber athlete. So how can this process be fixed? I think that's the question we need to think about next with this whole national qualifier. And I, I in all honesty, looking back at um, this whole qualification process. I don't know if we actually need to have a separate uh, national champion because the Open is already supposed to be a worldwide competition that should already gauge and test everybody who's technically eligible to complete no matter the country. So anybody should theoretically essentially be able to go to the games. Now, whether or not other countries have been able to send an athlete, I think is a different story. But I think I don't think we need to actually have a national qualifier to send a representative from every single country to the games. In the same way that with the Olympics, not every single country has athletes that go to the Olympics. There's some countries that don't qualify for events because they aren't ready for that level of competition or don't meet the minimum requirement to qualify for said event. I think also there needs to be a minimum or maximum point requirement for getting an invite to go to the games if you are a national uh, champion for your country. So l let's look, for example, at Matt Frazier, who scored 66 points versus the only male in Tonga who scored 256,044 points. That's a really, really big discrepancy. Um, and it, I think it really needs to um, 
identify that issue um, in terms of this fix because of the fact that why did this person score such a low score um, compared to, to Matt Frazier, which yes, he is technically kind of an outlier, but those high level athletes uh, should have scores that are somewhat similar in nature that shouldn't be that far spread apart. And this whole, um, all you gotta do is just compete uh, for the country and be the top uh, performer in the country is great. But then there also needs to be another check to say, well, hey, yes, you met these requirements for your country, but where do you stand at on the overall leaderboard? So for the overall leaderboard, do you have, uh, you know, let's say for example, your score can't be um, higher than a thousand points. So then that way you don't have just these huge crop of people coming in from all these random places, like from who knows where, somebody from Congo who has 300,000 points, who technically did everything RX, but doesn't actually, again, represent a, one of the fittest individuals in the world. Last but not least, I think another fix would just be to allow the sanctional events to allow athletes to qualify for the games. Let's have more sanctional events in more countries and more regions so that more people have the ability to get to these events and qualify to go to the games. If CrossFit HQ is trying to decentralize their approach to competition and really push back on competition being something that's more community driven, then I don't think that um, having the national qualifier set um, by CrossFit HQ is going to actually be the best way to identify the top athletes. Case in point for something uh, for this idea is the current number of sanctionals events that are, have already been proposed and the number of events that are actually going to be set up in the future. Um, as of right now, we have quite a few. We have the Dubai CrossFit Championships. We have Wadapalooza. We have the Australian CrossFit Championships. We have CrossFit Fittest in Cape Town. We have CrossFit Strength and Depth, Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, CrossFit Italian Showdown, Asia CrossFit Championships, uh, Reykjavik CrossFit Championships, Brazil CrossFit Championships, Down Under CrossFit Championships, the Rogue Invitational, CrossFit Lowlands, the Granite Games, CrossFit French Throwdown, the list goes on and on. There's more events that are, I'm assuming, being planned. Those events should be the events that actually qualify individuals from other countries. The Open and the National Leaderboard, I don't think is going to be the rep best representative of that. And I don't think it should be um, the representative of who gets selected as a national champion. And I think just the system as it is set up in place now is actually broken. I think this is something that just really needs to be addressed before going into the 2019 CrossFit Games open season that starts in the fall because that's that's right around the corner. That's let's may let's say maybe six months if that. I say all that to say that I do realize that this is an experiment in some regards, in regards to this new open format. But this is something that really needs to be fixed because I think it just opens the door for all kinds of loopholes for people to go to the games that actually shouldn't be at the games. So guys, I'm going to end today's video here. Let me know down below what your guys' thoughts are with the current format of the CrossFit National uh, Invitational Leaderboard. Do you guys like the current system? Do you guys not like the current system? Is there something that I said was wrong? Let me know down below. Let's duke it out. Let's fight and let's have this conversation. So guys, as always, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button because that lets me know I'm creating the kind of content that you guys want to see. Guys, as always, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. This is David and I catch you guys in the next video. Peace.